I don't have to be doing everything. I just need to make sure that everything's getting done. I know you get this question a lot because I've seen builders ask you this question and it's always, we always have a bit of a giggle about it because, you know, it's that perception of what people see versus what's going on in reality. But lots of builders do see you and they ask you, you have so much going on, you know, you seem to have all of these things, all of these different businesses, all of these things that you're interested in and you're passionate about. How do you actually manage to get so much done? I know what I'm good at. Like it's pretty much that simple. I, um, I learned very quickly in business that um, like I needed to focus on my strength and, uh, and get other people to do what, I, what I'm not good at. So everything that I do in my business, um, and even with Live Life Bill, like you and I both know what our strengths are, what we're good at. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't try other things every now and then, but like for me to be, make the most use of my time uh, every day, it means that I really spend that time focusing on what I'm really good at and uh, in my building business like I'm like I'm really good at the client communication having the client meetings going to design meetings I, I love that side of it um, I'm really good at managing things so like I can have multiple jobs on lots of different trades everywhere and I'm very good at managing making sure everyone's doing what they should be doing and um, something I got told um, uh, probably five or six years ago and it really stuck with me is I don't have to be doing everything. I just need to make sure that everything's getting done. And that's my focus. Yeah. And this is the thing is that when you actually do really think about what are your strengths, what are you good at, what do you enjoy spending your time on, you know, what, what do you enjoy doing but perhaps you could improve so you need to gain some extra learning, um, what are you really great at and you could actually spend more time doing that, you'll be far more efficient, you'll be far more productive, which then in turn helps your business actually grow and thrive and support you to then be able to outsource those things that you're not great at or look at how you can bring in team members that are going to support you in that way. And I think that you know, when you look at teams, the best performing teams, it's because they have people with complementary skill sets doing yeah. what they're great at and all working together to deliver, a, you know, the best result. Yeah, look, building is a, is a really challenging job and there, there can be so much going on. And um, as we've sort of come to know over the last two years with doing Live Life Build, um, because we've developed such an incredible process, process systems library, um, and we've broken it right down, but only 20% of the tasks it takes to run a building business are done on site. 80% of the other tasks are away. So that's all your contracts, administration, like um, project management, design meetings, all those types of things. So yep. There's so much going on. So I think so many builders get tied up in trying to do all the little tasks. And this can be for multiple reasons. You might feel that you can't afford to employ someone um, you might even feel that you're not, your business is not big enough to employ someone. Like, there's so many reasons. But at the end of the day, like, if you're trying to do everything, you're just going to waste a lot of time because there's always going to be someone that's more efficient at doing something. And so I think um, a good starting point is like sitting down and, and outlining it, just a, a full list of the tasks that you're currently doing in your business. And then maybe go through with some different coloured highlighters and like highlight the ones that you think you're really good at, um, highlight the ones that you want to do. I think that's really important. Like it's not just about ones you want to do. If you don't enjoy doing it, there's, there's, there's no point doing it because you're going to get tied up, you're going to get frustrated. Um, and then highlight ones that you could easily outsource and give other people to do. And um, basically over the years, that's, that's what I've done. And I've always, like from a very early um, stage in my businesses, way back even when I had a contracting carpentry business, I employed people where I needed to employ them. So I have always had a bookkeeper to help me out with the numbers. Um, it, it didn't help that I didn't understand the numbers, but it still got all the accounting side of things done. It kept the business flowing. Um, I've always employed a uh, accountant to like do the, the final numbers and review things and talk me through things. So, um, and when it comes to like doing things on site, like again, even back when I had a contracting business, I employed carpentry supervisors. So 
Like I could end up with 40, 50 carpenters. I could be working on multiple jobs for multiple builders. And I, could, I knew I had teams running things. And, and no different these days with my building business. So I have an incredible team. I think the important part to remember here for, for any builder out there watching this is it's not all me. Like I do get asked all the time. I get lots of messages like, man, what, how do you do everything in a day? I see your Instagram stories. Like it looks like you're all over the place. Like how do you know what's going on? How do you keep everything under control? How do you keep cash flow? How do you make money? Um, and it's, it's not me. Like, but the reason it's not me is I've learned that you, in, you need to employ people. And so I only have so many hours in a day. In those hours, I want those hours to be focused on things that I'm good at, that I'm efficient at, and ultimately, like my business will be successful if I keep doing that. So, like I've got an incredible accounts manager in my business. My wife Camille um, does all the project management and admin in our business, and she's amazing at that. Um, I've got an incredible supervisor, like unbelievable supervisor, been with me a long time. And I've got incredible lead carpenters and other uh, like um, your normal carpenters and apprentices. Like, and so by employing people, like learning about people, putting people in the right roles, I think that's really important. That is what allows me to, on face value, look like I'm doing so much. Yeah, and I think too, oftentimes you can forget a couple of things. One is if you're spending time on things that you're not good at, and that you are slow at and feel you cannot learn, you st it starts to mess with your mind, your head, mm. your headspace about, you know, whether whether you're cut out for this, whether you're actually capable of this. And, you know, uh, mo like 99.9% .9 of the time you are, you're just the wrong person to be doing that job and you need help. And so far too many business owners struggle for far too long doing tasks that they are not suited to and then make that mean that they're not good at running a business. And instead, you'll often find that if you actually put a value on your time and a monetary value on your time, you would realise that you can hire somebody for far less money to be able to do that job that then frees you up to have greater capacity to um, earn more money for your business doing the things that you are good at and that you're more expertly suited to because it needs your experience and your expertise. So it's really important that you stay focused on, you know, what are your strengths, thinking about what you're good at, and this has worked really well for Dwayne. And then obviously identifying where can you bring in support. Understand you're not going to build this team overnight. You know, it's taken Dwayne a long time to build this team that he can trust and rely upon. So you're not going to get this overnight. But starting and looking at where are the team members that you could bring in to start working on some of those jobs that, you know, need to be done in order to keep running your business, uh, but could be done more effectively and also potentially far more cheaply by somebody else other than you. And look, the other thing to remember here is uh, Live Life Build's no different. Like Live Life Build, Amelia and I, it's not just Amelia and I. Like we have multiple staff behind the scenes that um, deal with a lot of stuff that is more efficient for them to do than for us to do. So um, figure out what you want to do in your business, focus on it, um, get people doing the other tasks. And the other thing, I guess, Amelia, to um, bring up as well is it, sometimes it's not just uh, employing people. Like, there's a lot of apps and software out there now too that Very will make true. your life a lot easier. And um, I know Amelia's got a lot that she loves. I've got a lot that I've loved. And like just really simple ones, like I am absolutely useless on a computer. And so simple ones like um, voice memo tools and things that you can talk to on your phone that can then translate that into an email or send a message to someone. Like there is so much out there that can help you. And don't let, be like I was for a long, long time and make excuses that I don't know how to do everything. I've got no time. Prioritize your time on what you're good at. Focus on what you're good at and employ people or find software or apps to do the things that can be done more efficiently.